Welcome to Fear It Goes, the podcast all about taking your fears with you and doing it anyway. I'm your host, Brandi Taylor. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to Fear It Goes. Today, we are going to talk about emotional states. I know, I just said emotions, blah, shove those down, right? Wrong, 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 wrong. And I'm going to explain why. First off, you need to know that emotions are energy in motion. Or in most cases, and what we're going to talk about today is energies that are not in motion, that are trapped inside the body. And that's emotional states that are quite destructive for us as humans. So today we're going to talk about some stuff that's going to sound a little bit different and a little bit crazy, but really it's not at all. And I really hope by the end of this podcast, you have a clear understanding of how emotions work in the body, why it's so important to not just shove them down, and things that you can do to start releasing. So I am in the midst of experiencing something really spectacular, again, (laughs) and you can too. So I'm going to explain what I'm seeing right now and the insights I have. I've talked before about higher state and lower state. And really, this is vibrational levels, but this has everything to do with our emotional ties to things. So as I'm sitting here writing to my girlfriend about what's happening and what I'm seeing, I realize this is something I want to share with you. I said, isn't it funny that I can feel all the energy moving through my body right now in perfect harmony? Isn't that crazy? I can feel it firing around my head in perfect symmetry. I can feel it moving through my body because I'm vibrating there. Now, when I sit in my normal emotional days, I do not feel any of this. Occasionally, I feel some bits and pieces, but I don't feel this. And this is almost indescribable, but like magic. This is what I refer to as higher state. Higher state is us in our true, authentic self, but with no ties. No ties. This is pure love. This is unconditional love. This is no ownership. This is absolutely just owning you. The coolest part about this, infinite possibilities, infinite wisdom, everything is at your fingertips, so to speak. And the only way that we can truly own ourselves is if we release the emotional ties to the stuff that binds us in a lower state of being. So we are bound by our emotions. And let me explain how emotions work. First of all, emotions are tools and they're created by a chemical reaction after a thought. You experience something, the thought goes through, the chemical reaction happens, the emotion is now in play and we can either release it or not. And depending on what the experience is, sometimes the emotion hangs out in the body. This is why we see a lot of illness because this is long-term stresses on the body the longer we maintain them. These emotional ties, these emotional charges that are now stuck in the body like a memory in your mind. Now, higher grade emotions in comparison to low grade emotions are different in the way that they resonate in the body. When we look at emotional states, they start here. This is vibrational levels within our body based on the emotion that is now being driven through it, through our thoughts. So we start with shame. Shame sits at a resonance of 20. This is hurts inside our body. Okay. And I don't mean hurt as in H-U-R-T. I mean hurt as in (laughs) H-E-R-T-Z. Hurts. But isn't it funny that it has the same word with a different meaning? So we start with shame. It's 20. It resonates so low, it keeps us heavy. And it keeps us so far away from who we are. This is a thick layer. And when I say thick layer, I mean a thick layer that you need to release. It's a heavy one. It's a hard one in the body. Guilt comes next, and that sits at 30. So not much better. It's a little better, but not really. 20 and 30, terrible resonance. Your body is just anchored. Then we have apathy, and then we have grief. Apathy sits at 50, grief sits at 75, then fear. I realize as I'm... (laughs) I realize as I've 
been thinking on any of these states and beings and what's happening and the amygdala and our primitive brain in comparison to our frontal lobes and where we can actually get within the power of our brain that we have access to that we haven't been utilizing. I realize that Fear It Goes was the perfect name for my company because my life was based on fear. So I knew that that was part of it, but I didn't know why. Because the primitive brain keeps us in fear. It's based on fear. It's based on protection. But the problem is that protection binds us. We are bound to the emotions that keep us in the familiar so we can stay safe. It's just how the brain works. And it's done so well for so long. So fear sits at 100. It's getting better. But where we really want to get to is like 500. (laughs) So 100 is still not so good. Most people resonate somewhere around 200 today. That's approximately an average of a person's resonance on any given day. 200 is courage. But let me, let me back up a little bit. So we got fear at 100, desire at 125, anger at 150, pride. Oh, that beautiful ego. Pride comes in at 175, courage at 200. Neutrality is 250. So if you're sitting in a space of neutral, you're sitting around 200 to 250, somewhere in that range in your vibrational levels. But you're not really getting where you want to go because our vibrations have everything to do with how our lives move forward and what we're drawing to us, like the beautiful magnets we are. We are energy. We can't deny that. We can measure it. It's measured over and over and over again. And science is slowly but surely proving all of the woo-woo thoughts or the woo-woo ways of the 70s, the 60s, and prior. Science is catching up with all of this. And there is an amazing documentary that I watched last night with a ton of scientists, which is so great, backing what I'm talking about. They talk about how things work, how the mind affects it, and how it manifests through the body. The body is the physical of the mind. Our body is being determined by what we are perceiving through the mind. So back to resonance. Neutrality is 250. Willingness is 310. Acceptance is 350. And let me tell you, there's something very powerful about the resonance of acceptance. Acceptance of self. Because when you accept self, there is no more fear. You just accept. So when I spoke before about energy and the experience I had last year with the awakening. Let me tell you, I was fearful, (laughs) but now I'm just going to own it. I'm going to empower every moment in my life. And I'm so hoping you do too. I am so hoping you do too, because regardless of what you've experienced in your life, you can own it in a healthy way and love every bit of who you are every bit. So after acceptance comes reason. That sits at 400. We're starting to move into an expanded, expansive place within our energy, and we're starting to draw some good things in the 400 range. Now we move up. 500 is love. And love, when you experience love, not through ego and not through all of the low-grade emotions of desire or fear, I have to fill something, so therefore I'm going to seek that out through some somebody else. That's not really love. That's us trying to find ourselves and trying to accept ourselves and trying to love ourselves. When we're whole and we love ourselves completely, there is no need to fill that space because we're full. We're full. So true love is not about an ownership. It's not about any type of conditions. It's just, I love you. It just is. And this is the thing about what I call higher state. People can call it enlightenment. You can call it a million different things. It doesn't really matter. God state, um, connection to universe. I I don't know, infinite wisdom, whatever you want to call it. It is just the connection to everything that is just because it is. We just are, we are layering on all of these emotions and ideas 
through the lens of an emotion. But if we just see life for what it is, which is just happening and amazing, and we draw it to us, and we have every opportunity, because that's what life offers, every opportunity, life changes. I am always brought back to that movie, Life is Beautiful. Always brought back to that movie. That movie had such a massive impact on me because here is one of the most horrific external events happening, right? Here is this guy. He's been put in a concentration camp. It's horrible. It's horrendous way to live. And his son is there with him. And what does he do? He provides his son a different lens. He gives his son the gift of game, a play of experience through another way of seeing. So his son may or may not have, but the whole idea behind the movie was that his son never saw the horrors of the concentration camp the way that most survived it. Instead, the experience was made very different. He just lived there. It just was. They made the best of it. They created their own reality. This is a lens we provide ourselves and an understanding we provide ourselves and the lives we can give ourselves. So back to our resonance and where we're vibrating. Love is 500. Joy is 540. Peace is 600. And enlightenment is 700 and up. And I will tell you, there is nothing, nothing you will ever do in your entire life ever that will give you what you get when you reach that level. No drug, no event, no other person, including even having kids. And trust me, I love my kids more than anything on this planet. But nothing will give you what you get from being whole, completely whole with yourself and everything that is. It is the most amazing gift So I'm talking about resonance and vibrations and emotions because these are the things that bind us to our shitty experiences in life or our greatest experiences in life. It's funny because I've chosen words. I think words are very powerful. And the way that they seep seep through from the subconscious sometimes is quite interesting. I named my talk which is all about traumas and how to release them. I named it Bound, Anchored, and Left to Sink. And I was referring to these experiences in life, but not really fully understanding that that's what the subconscious was leaking. I was bound by the emotional ties. I knew that releasing the emotional charge And being able to release the emotion from the experience was a gift to freedom. I I know that, and that's what I talk about. But this was the first time I saw it any other way. It is not only freeing us from that trauma, but it raises us up every time we release the emotional ties. And we experience life for, again, what it is, just be, just being We can draw anything we want from an experience. It's our heaven, it's our hell. It's our peace, it's our torture. It's our beauty, it's our disgust. It's our repellent, it's our amazement. We can draw whatever we want through any experience. It's up to us. Because the experience is only that. It's just an experience. All things in life are just an experience. Now, you might say, well, how does that relate to someone who's dying? How does that relate to someone who's been sexually assaulted? How does that relate to life experiences that are horrible and traumatic? I haven't wrapped my head around that yet. However, I can say in death, When I experienced the first death in my life that was traumatic, it was really impactful. I hate to admit this, but not. It was my dog. She was my kid. She was my first kid. 
they're, <laughs> I'd never had a pet, not like, not like her. I picked her up from the breeder. So it was like picking her up from birth. And then I had her to the day we put her down. And I went through every stage of grief and I learned what it was, what it was like to truly lose someone important in my life. And I cannot believe the gifts that came from that death because in the beginning it was miserable and all I could do was cry. But there were so many gifts in that. And see, I haven't talked about this, but I'm going to. So I'm going to share it here. We're going to talk about some emotions and be vulnerable. I'm owning me. I'm not afraid of me. I'm not afraid of any of me anymore. So I'm going to give you this. I am the daughter of a convicted serial rapist. He spent 20 years in jail, a long time. And for a long time, I carried his shame. I was deadly afraid of him. I changed my last name because of that. There were many actions that came from his role in an experience that wasn't even mine. I tell you this because it's important. It took me a long time. It took me a long time to understand the gifts that there were in his actions. It took me a long time to understand the gifts that were in the actions of childhood growing up before he left. It took me a long time to actually be able to see how to move on in life without the destructive patterns that had developed because of that. Carrying someone else's First of all, carrying someone else's shame is just so sad. It's so sad and it's unnecessary. And reliving life events over and over with the traumatic emotional charge is not helpful either. And it's not necessary either. But it's the way we're taught or not taught to look at life and to approach life. It's the layers we've experienced with no understanding of what to do with that life event that create our lenses. And then the emotions are stored. Big events, big emotional charge often are not released because I don't know about you, but did your parents teach you how to let it go? (laughs) Mine didn't know how. And most people don't. Your body knows how, and some things we let go of pretty easy. So our bodies definitely know how to release the emotional tie, but often we don't know how to release the big emotional charges that come with the bigger events or the experiences that are now governing our lives. I talked about this in a past podcast about money and the belief systems around money, and those are traumas too of a sort. I mean, really, anything that influences you is a trauma. It's affected you. And my trauma doesn't have to be your trauma. And my trauma doesn't matter if it's big or small because it's not yours. Yours is yours. Releasing emotional ties to things is truly your freedom. And it allows you to reach states of being who you are that you will never, ever attain without releasing those emotions because they literally are binding you. You are bound to that emotional frequency and bound to relive that that emotional experience over and over and over again. Don't be bound to the emotional frequency of 20 and 30 and 50 and 100. Can you imagine? I carried shame, shame my whole life for most of it. That's 20. No wonder my life didn't turn out the way I thought it was going to. No wonder I was attracting all these crazy things in my life that weren't so great because I was stuck at a really low vibrational level, no matter what I did to bring myself up because we can raise our vibrations. Dancing helps. Music helps. Lots of things help us. Laughing helps. Meditation can help. Any moments that we can raise ourselves to joy or laughter or play or creativity, all these things help raise our vibrations. But inevitably, we're right we're brought right back down to whatever the resonance is of our lowest emotion in any given moment if we haven't released it. 
because all emotions are, are your tie to an experience you had in the past and your body storing it like a memory. That's it. So every time you have a feeling, an anger, a shame, a guilt, a, a fear, well, fear is a little slightly different, but every time you have one of those emotions, it's based on something you've already experienced and now it's just got a different face. Same experience, different face. So even though we think it's different, it's not really, our bodies recognize it and go, oh, I know that. Here, let me draw that back up. And then you have the emotion again and again and again and again. And then we wonder why we're experiencing so many issues in our life, so many things repeating in our life. Why are we never getting what we want? So many illnesses in our society because we can't break free of the emotional cycles. I know this sounds pretty crazy. And it's only crazy because we've never been taught how our bodies function with our minds. There is no disconnection. We've been taught there's a disconnection, that the body functions solely on its own. It's not true. I hope you all get to the point where, you've, where you reach this understanding of what emotions do in your body and how important it is to release them. And I hope you all get to a point where you seek out the tools to release them. In earlier episodes of this podcast, I have talked about NLP and hypnotherapy or hypnosis, whatever you want to call it. Same, same thing. And really all that is, is tapping into the subconscious, which is really exciting because our conscious state perceives our life through our senses. That's it. I'm simplifying things. There's a lot of layers to this, but really when we boil it down, that's it. We perceive life through our senses. That's how we determine what we experience. That's our reality, but it's not really your full reality. Your reality sits a lot in your subconscious and your potential reality sits in your subconscious because everything we feed through from the subconscious to the conscious is based on our beliefs and sets up what we deem to be reality and our existence. I've contemplated how deep to get in this discussion with you. How much insight should I give you? And which way is the best way to deliver it? Because some of these concepts come from a space that I find sometimes difficult to explain. That is the beauty of having knowledge feed through that doesn't typically come through your senses. It's not something that you're learning from the external world. It's something you're learning from the internal world. And when you learn internally, sometimes it's very hard to explain. So I think I'm just going to give it all to you. Some of you will get it. Some of you won't. That's okay. Keep following because at some point this is going to hit your subconscious and it's going to resonate and you will advance. You will understand some of the inner workings of you without even realizing that you're learning them. Yay, because it is my goal and my mission to help millions of people reach an understanding of themselves and really be set free. I want to set you all free. From today forward, this is my declaration. I will speak from the heart and I will hide none. I will share it all with you. I will gift you what I am gifted right now in these moments. It scares me. I'm not going to lie. But there is an excitement wrapped up in this too that really drives me to share as we go. This is me in a moment of bravery. This is me in a moment of vulnerability. And it's okay. So many people say, well, you can't talk on these levels with people. They don't understand it. I think you will. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Next week begins the sex series. That's right. Oh my gosh, peeps. I'm so excited. So I've done all these recordings and they are exciting. They're all ready to go. And I'm telling you, you are in for a massive treat. There is so much good content in that. You're, it's going to blow your mind. I'm telling you, it's going to blow your mind. Can't wait. I'm so excited <laughs> to bring it. But really, from now on, like these days, I am so excited to bring you everything I've got. And it seems in next week's podcast and the weeks following, there is nothing I hold back. And honestly, that's the way I want it to be. I want it to be absolutely full of power for you guys moving forward. So... Until next week, peeps, you beautiful, beautiful souls, go check out feargoes.com and 
Have an absolutely extraordinary week.